So we've gotten past that crystal dragon thing, and we're finding our way to the great mother crystal. Now, Sid seems to believe. No. Oh. Sorry if I sound kind of bad during this episode. I'm, uh, I tend to record these things a decent way in advance before I upload them, so it's over by the time this gets uploaded, but I'm going through a COVID infection right now, so I'm having a hard time keeping my voice sounding like normal. But, you know, I want to get through this anyway, so... Mother Crystal's up here. Sid seems to believe that if we destroy the Mother Crystal, we might be able to save the world from the Blight, thinking that the Mother Crystal is sucking the ether out of the air, out of the soil and everything, causing the spread of the Blight. Guess we'll find out if he's right. Beautiful. The heart of Sambrek. Well, that didn't work. I think we're going to need a bigger sword. Mine's bigger. Thank you, Clive, but I meant that figuratively. The core's clearly made of sterner stuff. Taya's going to have a fit when she hears about this. Stand back. It's about to get cramped in here.
I've been here before. Giant things that want us dead, and they seem to be everywhere. This is something that I've pointed out with in the past, that this game seems to really go for is the kind of enormous spectacle. There's never really been, except for maybe in Final Fantasy XII, since the games went in the direction of, like, 3D and stuff. The games never really attempted to ground themselves that much, like the action has always been over the top and all that kind of stuff. But this game in particular has really decided to go balls to the wall with the craziness. So that's why we keep encountering these gigantic monsters that are just take up the entire room. We have these giant battle arenas just to... Like, we're not fighting the creature yet, but we're fighting the little spawns of it. So, that's, uh... It's a bit of a difference, but, you know... God, I'm not coming up with anything useful to say, am I? and yours. So many of these enormous, like, boss battles take place from these icon battles, you know. You turn in the free and fight the boss as opposed to fighting the boss like as a like, character. Because as huge and as epic as these are, they do kind of change the gameplay dynamic a little bit. So it doesn't feel like you're actually fighting a boss battle so much as just taking part in an overly choreographed set-piece battle. And too much of the gameplay has changed that, like, you're not really playing as the same character right now. you got different stats, different moves, different everything. But they wanted to go for their big over-the-top event. That's what they're doing here. So we're fighting Typhoon here. Typhoon is a reoccurring creature in the Final Fantasy series. I don't know if Typhoon is an icon, because 
While Typhoon has been a summoned creature in earlier Final Fantasy games, Typhoon has also just been a reoccurring enemy. So that might be the reference that we're seeing here, is just as Typhoon as an enemy, because all of the other icons we've seen so far, Ifrit, Shiva, Ramu, uh, I guess Garuda, Odin, Bahamut, uh, what's the last one? Titan. They've all been like legacy summons for like a long history, like a lot of games. Whereas Typhoon, you know, not so much. And Typhoon appeared as a regular enemy more often than it appeared as a summon, I think. So uh, maybe it's possible that we're not looking at a... We're not looking at a an icon here. Especially since we don't... If it is an icon, we don't know who it is. Because all the icons have a dominant, a person. It transforms into them. And it seems a little strange to have us fight somebody without us knowing who it is. But, you know, whatever. Fight's almost over. different typhoon than we're used to seeing though typhoon in like uh, wasn't in that many games but like six and seven typhoon i don't think he was in many games though but typhoon was kind of like a red turd with arms did like multiple elemental damages this is like a human torso with multiple arms. I guess the the original Typhoon design does kind of look goofy, and if you try turning that into something in a modern game, it wouldn't look modern graphics. It wouldn't look that great. But this is a pretty big departure. It feels like they're just using the name for name recognition as opposed to like your standard uh, Final Fantasy naming conventions where like you have these you've always had these kind of reoccurring elements and even if characters are like obviously different different characters a lot of the Final Fantasy games have a Sid in them but he's never the same guy a lot of Final Fantasies have if free, but it's never the same creature. A lot of them have Shiva, never the same creature. 
that Ifrit tends to have quite a bit of variation in terms of his look. Like, in the early games, as well as 7, Ifrit had kind of like a human with horns. Also looked like that in Final Fantasy uh, 15. But a number of the other ones, like 8, like this one here, uh, I guess was... Is it free in uh, nine? I, I don't know. Has this kind of more bestial look. So you have these reoccurring names and like visual looks, but not not always like identical. But they always they have this follow a certain theme, and these names that associate with certain elements and that kind of things even though they're never the same character. And honestly, I forgot where I was going with this. I'm a little fucked up in the head. Maybe I shouldn't have done this today. <laughs> oh, I remember. It's about Typhoon. So I don't know if this is meant as just sort of that... Like, um... Damn, I'm missing everyone. <laughs> This battle against this typhoon is really intended to be the sort of typhoon of like the a reference to the earlier typhoon creature. Because it it wasn't really that prominent in the series to begin with. Or if this is just like it's a cool name to stick to a creature. 